Hello folks, we're back and we've been playing Lords of Ragnarok. Ragnarok. This is Owen here from Organic Cardboard. He comes over on Mondays and uh, and beats me at board games. Hey. <laughs> He's a he's he's really good, and I tell you what, uh, what's funny is every time I, I've seen a bunch of videos that other people have made, mm -hmm. and they all say the same thing: "I suck at this game." Yeah, well. also, uh, I play this game. Um, this is Owen's first time. I just mm -hmm. taught him tonight. I played it this game uh, about four or five times, uh, but only two player. So mm -hmm. I have yet to play this as a as a four player or game but a lot of people play these kind of things a two player it's mm -hmm. kind of unusual to find um an area control game that seems fulfilling i think with two people yeah uh there's two that i know of one would be this one because mm -hmm. i've had a lot of fun playing it this way I, I i imagine it's fun the other ways too but if you can play it at all at two player then it's it's better than most area control games yeah it's a lot it's a lot to pay attention to so playing that two player is great learning the game yes yeah, it is easier hard, to hard, learn it yeah it's hard to focus on all that's going on yeah the only other one that i've kind of come across that i really like at two people is is onk and oh, we'll, yeah. I'll have to we play, still haven't played it yet, yeah i'll have yeah. to play that one with you too yeah. and show you but uh so lords of ragnarok is as a viking themed game it's kind of like cyber vikings it's like like yeah. it's, if cybertron had vikings <laughs> i i just keep thinking of the thor movies and they're up there and they're like technologically advanced godhood and that's kind of what they're bringing down here because everybody's got like a lot of machinery involved with all of their uh their mythic lore that's being like even this troll character is literally just a mech with trees on him so <laughs> you take it for what it is the theme, the, the theme is somewhat pasted on. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it, it makes mm -hmm. it like it, they did tie, they tied it into like kind of what, like the strength of your, you know, like Odin is giving you uh, more authority over things and, mm -hmm. and Thor's making your individual character, uh, more powerful and, and, and what's her name? Freya. Freya mm -hmm. is, is making you more wise and stuff. So uh, it's it's an interesting mechanism they have where you can you can level up your character uh, by sending priests to worship at the, for the different gods mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, it's a um, it, it's actually a pretty quick game too. Uh, usually, like a lot of games I've, I've played of this, they seem to wrap up in, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in a, a sort of an appropriate amount of time. Yeah, I didn't uh, think it. I didn't feel like it dragged on super long. It's always a little bit longer that first time when you're teaching it and stuff because you got to learn things. But I bet if you and I sat and played it again, it would be about half the time. Yeah, we, we only went through two resets. So, like, you are, you're play, you've are you got these special actions you're doing. There's only so many that you can do before somebody has to reset. And, um, and we didn't even fully utilize all of our actions before we did reset the, the two times that we did. Um, and then, yeah, so I don't, I don't know how, exactly how many hours we were sitting <laughs> yeah. here for, but including the teach time, I mean, it might've been a, a good, what it, it's, it's almost, it's 11 o'clock now, I'll probably start, we probably started about seven roughly. Um, so, you know, four hours with the teach time. Yeah. yeah. A little, le a little less than four hours with the teach time. Oh, uh, we, we yeah, time. we fidget with cameras and do other stuff yeah. too. So. so, but I would say this is like a two hour, two hour game. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Justin beat me in like maybe an hour and a half. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> an hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> and, uh, He's so focused on teaching the game is what it is. He's an excellent teacher, and that's why the people that oh, he teaches yeah. beats him at the game. Uh, that might be it, too. Yeah. So He's I, so focused on making sure you get the rules down that he's not paying attention to somebody taking advantage of the rules. Uh, uh, you know, and this is another one of those games where I'm like, I want to do this, I want to do that, like I want to do these things, mm -hmm. but they they don't really they don't always equate to like good strategy. Yeah, you have to start condensing down at some point. There is a there is definitely a strategy. Uh, there's a there's like three ways to win this game. Mm -hmm. One is to occupy um, entirely three region or three lands. Mm -hmm. Which are uh, are all these things basically one two three four one no, two so, three some are three, three some are four I guess there's yeah Jesus the green one the only one that's four I think it is yeah um, 
<clears throat> yeah, so they're all color coded, uh, so you can kind of tell which, you know, what constitutes part of a land area, <clears throat> but then they call each individual areas a region, so you're taking they're over. Within, the, yeah, the areas yeah. within the land are well, regions. And then when you have all those regions of that color, then you control that one land, and then if you, three, you win as soon as you do. The other way is uh, the, some of these areas you can build temples. There's up to five temples that can be built. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, if you control all five of those, you also just kind of instantly win. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way is um, every time... So so you go through a whole turn, and there's several steps. What I've noticed about this game is it's really procedural. It's got a lot of like little procedures. Mm -hmm. So... You've got a you've got kind of a long a player turn has like five events in it. Uh, it starts off like with uh, your hero doing some uh, picking up things or sending your priest to pray if you have a priest to to go to a monument. Mm -hmm. Then your hero can move around or your or your boat that moves around the kind of the perimeter of the board can move around, uh, and then you can do. Um, then you can do rune actions if you've accumulated runes. You can spend them to do different things like control monsters or build alliances or something like that. Uh, then you can move your armies around or increase their values depending on where they are on the board. And then you get all the way to the end and you've got a special action. Now the special actions are kind of the meat and potatoes really. Of like All mm -hmm. that stuff is kind of like positioning for that special action. Yeah, it's definitely based around those those special actions or the really powerful things that you can do on a turn. And you can only do them once per, like, I guess you call it a round. You know, yeah, sort of yeah. like the round can be, you know, any length, not any length of time, but it, it can be really short if somebody just decides to, it's whenever once somebody decides to build a monument, then the round, like, kind of resets. Yeah, so there's six, there's six little uh, actions you could possibly mm -hmm. make on this board and you're going to take one of your one of your little uh one of your little markers and just designate one and uh they uh, they do different things they can either move your people around you can bring in reinforcements you can activate the monsters uh you can you can actually make a, kind of alliances with these monsters or tame some of these mm -hmm. monsters and then send them to go bite somebody else yep. You did that. <laughs> I did do that. You did that a little bit. Yeah, I, I tried to do it, but this yeah. one was a little bit weak. Then the uh, you can um, you can prepare. You can kind of like accumulate more combat cards and other things to kind of help you uh, do stuff. You could build, build a temple. Build a temple. Yeah, that's the, a good one. That's yeah. the best one. Yeah, it really is. If you don't, if you forget about getting your temples out, they, the priests are so powerful in the game abilities that the priests give you and so you build a temple you get a priest you control a temple space whenever somebody builds a monument you get priests for every one of the places that you control and those are what allow you to upgrade your well it's when you build the monument right. so so like if i built it and you had those then you oh, just really yeah oh, you wouldn't get anything oh, yeah well. so it's for the person that does it Shoot. it's another incentive Jeez. it's another reason i should have done it early <laughs> yeah Jeez. but I yeah, like, that. I thought we would all get it. No, right. no, it's only for the person that no. does it. And if you control those rune areas too, you get runes every mm -hmm. time that uh, the yeah. thing resets. So that's a pretty. Hmm. It's the timing is is really really important. It, it can yeah. really make or break uh, a whole game. So uh, now, what, one of the things that you I don't know if you said this already, but one of the three main win conditions is uh, to defeat monsters too. Yeah, right? yeah, and. Uh, I could see that being kind of a sneaky way to win because, like in a two-player game, you literally only have to beat two monsters. You got to beat any of the basic monsters, and then you got to beat the like boss monster, which in our game was Loki. I don't know if that does that change the boss that you're fighting. I think uh, with the I'm Kickstarter different. expansion content, I think there's one other boss. Yeah, but oh, it's cool. not, but in the base game, it's always Loki. Usually Loki. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but in fact, you'll you'll end up with the the. You'll end up with all. There's one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. There's six monsters, and they're always going to be the same six monsters. The base game has six monsters and one boss, so it's going to be the same uh, monsters and everything every time you play it. Is it only one battle win to defeat the monster? Like if you go into battle with him, you beat him once, he's out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I could see that being a sneaky way to win because, like, if you 
took your time just like building up your army is real big not really worrying about taking over areas and then you just slammed into the monsters i could see that being which i don't think that's the way that most people would like like focus on playing this game because you immediately start thinking area control you immediately start well and, and fighting the monsters and areas. stuff like we didn't even do a monster battle mm -hmm. in, in this in this mm -hmm. fight it is it's really tough loki's like really really difficult to fight mm -hmm. so you'd have to and it's only your hero's stats that do it so oh really oh so it's yeah so you'd have to build up your so. might here with the uh, thor stuff and yeah. like you get real mighty and then you can draw a whole bunch of combat cards before the fight starts so you need priests for and the priests again are yeah. crucial in this game yeah because that's what levels you up mm -hmm. that's what's going to keep keep your stats going up it's going to make it so you can hold more combat cards in your hand or runes to do things um, uh, uh, if you go with Freya or, or give you the authority. So when you put your, when you do deploy your troops out there, their, their armies are already stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these monuments, so they build up in three pieces. So every time you take that build monument action, you're adding another, uh, section to that monument. And you have these cards that are going to show you like what the, um, uh, like, uh, like benefit you get for placing a priest into that area. So that's what priests do. You, you get to do that at the beginning of your turn if you have a priest available to use, which are kind of hard to get. But if you have one available, you can place it into a um, built monument space. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be built. Uh, it could just be the base. But the base is, is uh, fairly basic. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but uh, as the monument gets built, they get really powerful. Like Odin's ability allows you, once he's... Once the base is at its second level and you start putting priests on it, it allows you to increase all of your armies by two, which the armies only go up to six in their power. So, I mean, that's that's pretty huge if you if he's built up that way. So it's like once these monuments start getting uh, constructed, then it's like you want those priests to be able to take advantage of those really powerful actions that they start to give you. Um, yeah, like Thor's going to let you draw more combat cards. That doesn't seem as powerful. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess unless you're going hard into to might and you want to be able to fight monsters, that's one direction you might go in. Of course, you need... Freya just gives you like yeah. a ton of runes. And you need, you need room to hold the cards down too, and so you'd have to kind of have room to hold all the extra combat if you're going to be getting those combat cards. If you're playing a two-player game, you're probably not going to see a fully built monument, which is kind of an interesting thing <laughs> with these mechanisms like... Uh, these these big plastic things just mostly set off on the side of the board and look cool. Um, but it, it is fun to kind of... It looks neat once you do put them out on the board, but I, I, mm -hmm. I'd like to think that maybe a four or five player game would be neat if the monuments like really came out more. Yeah, shoot. Of course, every time they come out, everything gets reevaluated and it could possibly end the game. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting yeah. thing happening yeah. there. Yeah, but they they did they are cool even when their heads missing. I mean, it still looks like there's a big. I always feel like I'm going to break these things pulling the heads Ow. off. But even Thor here or uh, Odin here is where we we had him at on the game, and even with his head missing, it still is like, oh, they're really getting into Odin over there. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's ready to start some battles they're singing those odin songs yeah so that's that's, that's neat I, I like the mechanics there's a lot of neat little mechanics in, is it oh, yeah, there you go <laughs> like, I, thought, I thought his beard was his hair i'm like why is this not fitting um but yeah there's some some neat mechanics though with the way that you get to use both the um, special abilities the priest upgrade actions uh, these little blessing cards you get as temples are built out. You guys will draft out uh, a little special blessing that gives you extra power to go in one direction or another, so it might alter how you play the rest of the game, uh, just depending on what direction you're going in and what you draw. Um, I like it, though. I mean, it's it's it was it was definitely fun to play. Uh, you're real heavily maneuverable, too, in the game. Like, you know, we're talking about like a, the, having a satisfying... Uh, two-player experience on a mm. on an area control game and sometimes it can feel like it's real uh, I don't know like uh, lumberous or whatever to get across from one area to the next but these seas are really huge the the sea sections 
So they're uh, connecting all these lands, and if your boat is in any one of those sections of the sea, then they can just everybody can basically use them as as though you bridge adjacency yeah. as long as they're next to the uh, outside of the land where it's connecting to the water, they can just pop over to anywhere else in that area. So I thought that you know, and that makes it a little trickier too to defend your areas as well. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of what I took advantage of a couple times towards the end was maneuvering my characters around a lot uh, by way of the boat more than anything. So I like that. Um, so uh, quality wise for for the components, I got I I spent I spent a little money for the extra tokens mm -hmm. and for the miniatures expansion and for the the play mat. Uh, the only thing I've got out. Is the is this part of the extra runes? <laughs> it came with like little plastic uh, plastic runes, but they're unpainted. They they look they don't look as good as the painted ones. Right? Yeah, I've seen that before. And um, it's kind of like the Witcher coins were like that, like the the plastic Witcher little play, little markers yeah. or whatever. They look like crap compared to the cardboard ones, just because they were unpainted. Yeah, yeah. they kind of need a little splash of mm -hmm. color or something to them. Yeah, uh, it's got little standees for the temples and stuff. All of that's fine. I I I I don't usually say this. I think you could let go of the miniature expansion <laughs> for this one. I I I've got it. I I've, I did an unboxing. Where you can sit and look at all the different little things that come with it, but basically they replace, uh, they, or uh, they come with like little three-dimensional versions of all these little areas that oh, you can neat. make alignments with, and they're kind of cool looking. And I can't wait to paint them. But if, but the thing is, like you could put it on top of here, I guess. Uh, but if you just used it to replace this, you don't have the little wording. Like there's wording at the bottom of this that explains. Yeah, you'd probably want to put it on top of it. Yeah, it explains what you're going to do. So then you're placing two things there, which isn't, I guess it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, it just depends how like, you know, I don't know, extravagant you want how your order. immersive you want it to be. <laughs> these, do these, are these in the base set though? The, um, so all the, your armies yeah, and stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If you, if you have those or, or and the stat, the statues is with the monuments. Yeah priests and all that yeah because these are really nice um I, I don't know what you i mean you're the miniature guy you know about painting and everything but i think they have a a pretty nice amount of detail to me i don't know what you, you think so awakened really realms well. they have a product called sundrop mm -hmm. and that sundrop product the way it works is is basically an ink wash so they'll do it like a pre-ink wash kind of like the unmatched things come out all right so uh they uh sundrop sometimes it seems like sometimes they'll have more than one color uh, on things. I can't remember. I've only, the only thing I've ever gotten sun dropped was the castles of Burgundy. Yeah, it, it kind of depends how they do it because there's there's like a couple ways that they do it, uh, and one is to just do sort of a wash because other people do some like I don't think I think they kind of call it sun drop or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I think the technical sun drop supposed to be zenithal shading. Um, so they're supposed to actually go through and do a few layers of paint. Like they probably set all the minute, they probably have a system where they set all the miniatures and they get something that sweeps over it with, yeah. <laughs> with uh, spray paint in a different, different directions. Uh, but it's essentially like, like you're trying to get a lighting effect. So you have shadowing on your character. So you have a dark base that goes to a lighter base and to the finishing up with the lightest base at the very top. And the sun drop is kind of a sepia tone that they're using for that. But, um, but yeah, I feel like I've seen people talk about like this is kind of sun dropped or something, but it's really just, yeah, it kind of just looks like a dip or something. Yeah, like dip. That, which does help. I mean, it does make the details come out and, um, you know, you got these gray plastic miniatures and you've got uh, a lot of detail in them that just kind of gets washed out and they're mono, mono color that they have. But those, those washes um, sink in all those little spaces so it really brings out the definition of those, those different... Um, features in those miniatures i have to retrieve them before i step on them. Uh, yeah don't roll it <laughs> oh <it>. almost did <laughs> like the next thing i almost did was step on but yeah it's kind of like you know i mean so it, a good example like gloomhaven did their big miniatures thing <laughs> recently yeah and i'm just like geez like what would you want all that crap it's already <laughs> such a huge game yeah then you gotta throw like like probably twice as many box, you know, box sizes to fit all of the, the extra miniature content. And they look really, I mean, the standees for what they are, they look really good. They clearly show what you're fighting and everything like that. So well, they have a, they have a good 
clear yeah. function. Just, I, I think I think just depends. the mini so the miniatures themselves because they because of that sun drop product mm -hmm. that every time Awakened Realms does stuff they end up with these nice thick details. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, if you do contrast paint, you can take advantage of that of the way that they make these things and really paint. It makes them really easy to paint, and mm -hmm. they look great. The yeah. contrast paint. Sometimes the details are too subtle, like uh, maybe townsfolk tussle and mm -hmm. stuff. Have a lot of these really big planes and stuff on yeah. all their miniatures. Um, well, they're kind of like a cartoon style. Too, yeah, so, so they have really like... flat areas that don't look as great. These are just mm -hmm. chock full of details. And something I want to do is I'm going to attempt to do like a DIY sun drop. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to I'm gonna do a, a contrast paint layer and then I'm just going to dry brush up and, and kind of try to pick out some of the details and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to do that for the rank and file like the army guys. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just... And so I'm only going to paint... Um, the heroes and the monsters. So I'll paint the heroes and the monsters the way I always do. Mm -hmm. But the rank and file troops, I'm going to do my own sun drop. And then for these guys, I'm going to do like a, another sun drop because they're statues. Mm -hmm. So they can be, there's having them as like a monocolor. I might, might try to make them look like they're made of um, gold or something. Or Well, I was thinking I, I'd like to do them so they look like they're made of marble or something like mm -hmm. that. Oh, that'd be, be cool. There's yeah. kind of a marbling effect that you can do that might be kind of yeah. neat. Yeah, uh, I've been sure. looking at that. But that's, um, miniatures wise, they're neat. Uh, they seem, they, and uh, in the base game, what they give you in the base game is absolutely sufficient for, uh, for kind of give, giving it a cool, making a cool looking minis on a map kind of game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's got an excellent uh, presentation uh, from what I can tell. Um, even considering the things like, you know, Sean said the majority of this, he didn't, he said the only thing he brought out was these little uh, bases for these, these runes that come back uh, every uh, reset. So um, it, I, I think it's, it's, it's a really nice uh, presentation on the board. Yeah, the normal one is just like a little piece of cardboard. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, which even that's not, yeah, that doesn't make, I mean, it's kind of nice because these have a little indention to hold the, uh, the runes in them. Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. It, and these little, it's got nice little plastic components, you know, for, uh, these placement markers are nice, satisfying little, mm -hmm. uh, spree looking tokens. That's part, of, <laughs> no, that's part of the base as well. Yeah. That's part I, of the base set yeah. and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, they work really well. If they're nice to fiddle with in between your turns, they're gonna stack them and drop them and stack them. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if you like Greek mythology more, uh, the first version of this game was called Lords of Hellas, and it was a uh, and it was all the the Greek guys. Uh, the, the, <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm sure it's cool. Uh, Norse mythology. Uh, it was. I, and I don't. I never played the other one. It had statues just like that too. So it's kind of it's a very similar game. Yeah. I think they changed some things for this one. I, I don't know enough about the first one to, to compare the two, but I, I'm definitely more into Norse mythology than I, especially this year. I'm probably immediately biased <laughs> just from having played this once. I'd go back and be like, "Where's Odin at? Where's <laughs> <laughs> this? Doesn't make sense." Um, but I mean, yeah, Greek mythology is cool and all, but yeah, Norse mythology is a little more, especially for like battling and stuff. It's, it seems a little, a little, a little more, uh, I don't know, thematic for an area control game. Of course, I'm sure, you know, the Greece, Greek took over plenty of people too, but. I was trying to think, do you feel like the theme carried through? Like, like, did you feel like, I, I, I kind of feel like the theme. Yeah. I mean. I it think, looks nice. I, yeah, mean, I think it, it feels, was there it almost nice. purely aesthetic. Yeah. You know, there's, like you said, there's there's areas where the particular gods' monuments are affecting certain things, but I didn't really feel like there was anything huge. It wasn't even like, I don't know, Fafner wasn't even blowing fire across the land or anything like <laughs> that. Like, there wasn't, wasn't any, uh, yeah, I didn't. You get to say a lot of words. Mm -hmm. like, but... <laughs> like like my special ability for the scald was I just get to draw a rune if I take over a settlement. I mean, there's nothing really particularly thematic about that. It's just just some some little bonus that you get that goes along with it. I you know I didn't really feel that. I mean, for the most part, it's painted on. I would say yeah, too. It, it's it and there's a lot of abstraction. It's very and, pretty it, paint though. 
Yeah, yeah it's a very pretty paint job that they did. Uh, everything's sort of an abstraction. Like these individual guys on the board are actually whole armies. Mm -hmm. And there's a base at the bottom uh, that you can turn that uh, denotes how how many armies they are. Uh, I'm wondering if that's going to be a problem. So I haven't pushed them on too terribly tight yeah. because I want to pull. You can pluck these uh, pluck these numbers off and mm -hmm. go paint this thing, and that's what I'm hoping to do and put it back. But. Yeah, I mean it's kind of nice that they're not overly fitting so they don't tear up your uh, your little cardboard pieces. But these these work really well though. The little the little you know numbers on the bottom. I, I like that a lot. You know, it feels really nice to have that. That's a good alternative to like putting like little cubes out to, to know oh, how yeah. powerful they oh, are yeah. or, or, yeah, you, no. or still more of them it's immediately better yeah and it doesn't look like it's like overly like you know difficult for them to add that in they just you know develop that model and throw a little uh you know a little little base insert on it and it works works really well though to keep up with the numbers and it's kind of interesting too like you can't uh there's a mechanism where you can inc just increase that number uh in, of your armies so it can go like from a four to a five uh, but only if they're in a village, and it, which mm -hmm. kind of seems interesting because it's like you're kind of gathering the people up and yeah. looking for new warriors or something like that. Yeah. Meanwhile, you see those temple spots, and you're like, crap, i got to get to the temple spots that give me nothing else other than the one temple. Yeah, but you take your army out to that temple, then that's as strong as it's going to be. Cause it, it, well, I guess you, you could use Odin or some other way to, to increase the strength. But right. a lot to think about. There's a lot There's a lot of layers to this game. Mm -hmm. Um and and I think the first time you pull it out to play it, like to me, reading the rule book made was really difficult. Like mm -hmm. this this, it's not so bad, and it's very small. Yeah, they really like, packed a lot into a small rule book. Uh, there's this is a really thin rule book. Like even when I was playing with Justin too, he's like, it's got to. Is there, where's the other book? Yeah, it's like there's got to be more book to this yeah. because there's all these like. There's all these procedures and all these things to do, but it's a lot it's, of steps. Yeah. It's actually kind of wrapped up in a pretty tight thing, like mm -hmm. combat. Uh, I I, th I kept trying to make it more complicated than it was. It's really not. It's just a uh, just mm -hmm. you're gonna throw some cards down and count count up who's got the most numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of like your battles and uh, 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 what am I thinking of the Viking game. Uh, Blood Rage, like where you throw, oh, yeah. throw a little extra combat cards down or whatever as you're fighting, increase your your power, um, which is nice because you can kind of see when the other person doesn't have any. <laughs> so. But once you've played, once you played this game once all the way through and maybe twice, uh, you got it. It's mm -hmm. not um, the turns go pretty quick. So even though a player turn consists of five phases, I feel like you can move right through these phases pretty quick, mm -hmm. and then you gotta spend maybe a little extra moment thinking about what you're gonna do for your special action. Yeah, yeah, you just keep your little player aid close by and you just flip down through each different section. Because it, it does look confusing at first, but this, this really helps a lot as soon as you play through a couple rounds, you kind of are like, oh, okay, you just go step by step by step. And it's not that many steps either. It's just you got to go in order. And I think that's the biggest thing is you got to follow this order pattern that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, a big red flag for me a lot of times when I get a game is when they hand me three player aids full of text like this. And there's a backside to them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> front and back. Yeah. So um, that's the rule book. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, that's that's why they have a short rule book is because yeah. they've got this to put in front of you, I guess. And, and really, these just kind of list out their. The orders and procedures and stuff for the different things that you're gonna do, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it covers it like those three things covers it pretty good. So, yeah, I, I I don't think we were in the rule book maybe two or three times, maybe yeah, not much at all. A couple, uh, couple little small small nuances, um, nothing nothing huge though. There wasn't yeah, nothing and different. usually what we just assumed was true ended up being the what what the mm -hmm. way it was. Yeah. So, yeah. very intuitive. In that way, so it is a little deeper. It's not. It's not for your first game, maybe. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not something you're you're gonna you pull out with your uh, your little sister that doesn't play games or right. anything like that. You know. Um, I think you can definitely develop the strategy though as you play. Like I think there's a lot of like Sean was saying. You know, it's like you're, there's a lot of things that you a lot of strategies that you could go towards in this game. A lot of directions. Um, 
and we pretty much just went for area control. Yeah. So we just went for the like like the, the most basic version of what we were going for in the game. My next goal with this game, well, I've got two goals with this game. My next goal is to play with more than two people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and after that, I'd like to paint it. So I'm gonna I'll be painting this, and you'll be seeing more of these uh, these miniatures on the channel uh, as I paint them up. And we'll take a look at them when that happens. Right on. And I think that's all we got to say about this game for now. We might be back with a playthrough or something else. If you like board game reviews, if you like watching us talk about board games, <laughs> there's a whole playlist of those kinds of things right there. Over here's something that YouTube thinks you'll like. And we'd love it if you subscribe to us and uh, come see us again. Until next time, enjoy your games. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.